The Gospel of John, chapter 15, Abiding in the Vine. John 15, 1, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. I am the true vine, Jesus Christ. He is called the true light, John 1, 9, the true bread, John 6, 32, and the true witness, Revelation 3, 14. There are the true riches, true worshipers, true God, true tabernacle, true heart, true sayings, faithful and true associated with God and his word, and those that believe them. Jacob gives a prophecy about Judah's future, and he mentions the vine in this prophecy. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Zechariah 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the foal of an ass. Matthew 21, 5 KJV, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the foal of an ass, one of the four trees associated with Israel as a nation. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it, and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes? And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down, and I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold oppression, for righteousness, but behold a cry. My father is the husbandman, God the father. In Genesis 9.20, Noah becomes a husbandman, and he plants a vineyard. What does a husbandman do with the vine? He watches over it. This includes the branches. So when Jesus, the vine, goes to heaven, the husbandman will continue to take care of the branches, the little flock of believers. John 15.2, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. The branch that does not bear fruit work, Jesus takes it away, and it is cast into the fire, hell, the lake of fire. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. The branch person that bears fruit, good works, he purges it, puts it through trials, so that it brings forth more good fruit, more individuals who believe the truth. John 15, verse 3, 4, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Cleansing, sanctified, comes from hearing the word of God and believing it. Contrast this verse with the last time the word clean is used to understand its meaning. Judas was not clean according to Jesus. John 13, 10 to 11. Judas was in the upper room when Jesus declared only the eleven as being clean. He had left to betray him in John 13, 31. Abide in me and I in you. They need to remember his words that he taught them and they need to do them so that fruit 
good works and souls saved will be produced. John 15, 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Those that abode in Christ after he was risen from the dead bore much fruit. 3,000 one day and 5,000 another time. Without me ye can do nothing. A branch will dry up when it is broken off of the vine because it is no longer nourished by the vine. John 15, 6, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Cast them into the fire? Who was it that was taken away as a dried up branch and burned in hell because he quit abiding in Christ? The vine. Matthew three eleven to 12 John 15, verse 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. If the twelve apostles were abiding in his word, they could ask anything in his name, and he will do it for them. This is not for today. John 15, 8 to 10, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. This was all the things Jesus taught the twelve in the little flock, while Israel was under the law. John fifteen eleven to 15 These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. But I have called you friends. A friend does not have to have someone commanding them to do what he already commanded them to do. A friend will do it out of love. John fifteen sixteen. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. When Jesus called the twelve in Matthew 10, verse 1 to 7, they were commissioned to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Whatsoever they would ask when Jesus was gone, that was in accordance with what Jesus taught them, the Father would honor. This is not for us today. John 15, teen, these things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. They were called out of darkness and into the light when they believed Jesus was the Christ. God was now their father instead of Satan. John fifteen twenty. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. John 15, 1, 22, But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. They have no cloak for their sin. They have nothing to hide behind. John 15, 23, 24, He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. The works that Jesus did were his father's works. So if they hated him, they hated the father who sent him to do his works. John 5, 25. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. 
fucks. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. John 15, 26 to 27. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. When the Comforter is come, he is the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, which proceedeth from the Father. He will testify of Jesus when he fills believers to embolden them to speak God's words. He came on Pentecost, Acts 2, Gospel of John, chapter 16, The Comforter. John 16, 1 to 2. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. They shall put you out of the synagogues. This is speaking about the religious person kicking a true believer out of their synagogue because they believe Jesus is their Messiah. John 16, 3 to 11. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the Prince of this world is judged. In verse 2, Jesus tells us that it is the Jewish people that he is speaking about during the time when the kingdom was being offered. It is speaking about the time immediately following his ascension, as well as during the tribulation period. This is the Holy Ghost, which came to comfort those first century believers that made up the little flock. And he will again help the new believers in the same manner during the tribulation period. And when he has come, Acts 2, he will reprove the world of sin, the sin of unbelief in Jesus, and of righteousness, Christ was the righteous one, 10, and of judgment, the judgment is not on mankind, but on Satan, 12, 31, the prince of this world, this is Satan, Matthew 9, 34, 12, 24, Mark 3, 22, John 12, 31, and 14, 30. In 16.13, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Spirit of truth, this is the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth, Acts 2.8. He shall not speak of himself, he will point to Jesus. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Just as God the Father gave Jesus the words to say, the Father will give the Holy Spirit exactly what to speak unto them. This is similar to how Paul would later receive teachings from the Holy Spirit for the body of Christ. Corinthians 13 JV Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual he will show you things to come. This is a reference to the prophetical things that they will write in their epistles concerning the time of Jacob's trouble. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. John 16, 14, 15, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. He shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. Jesus will give to the Holy Spirit the things that the Father gave to him, so that he may give it to the apostles to give to the little flock. Luke 12, 32. 
John 16, 16, a little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father, they said, Therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while, we cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A little while, and ye shall not see me. This is a reference to his soon death. A little while, and ye shall see me. This is a reference to his resurrection. John 16, verse 21 to 25. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice in your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. Verse 21 is an example of a proverb. Ezekiel 6, Behold, everyone that useth Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, As is the mother, so is her daughter. The time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. In Acts 1.3, it mentions that Jesus taught his disciples all things pertaining unto the kingdom of God, fulfilling these verses but I shall show you plainly of the Father. In Acts 1, 3, Jesus taught the apostles for 40 days things pertaining to the kingdom. John 16, 26 to 28. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again I leave the world, and go to the Father. This is not where we get our recipe for prayer today in the dispensation of grace. Prayer was to be addressed to the Father and asked in the name of Jesus. Those prayers identified the person praying as a believer in Jesus as the Christ. John 16, 29, 30, his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things? and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. They should have stayed with him at his arrest, but after his resurrection they were willing to die for him. John 16, 1, 32, Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. The hour cometh, yea, is now come. Jesus is speaking about his arrest in the garden and their scattering because of it, which is going to happen later that evening. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. John 16, 33, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Here we have a chapter break that breaks up the flow of what Jesus was telling his apostles. Chapter 17 is to be understood better by reading it with chapter 16. In the world ye shall have tribulation, because Jesus overcame the world. He wants his followers to be overcomers in the tribulation period. John uses the words overcome six times and overcometh eleven times in 1 John and Revelation. Cast 17, Jesus' prayer. John 17, 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Father, the hour is come. 
the hour of his departure to heaven, John 12, 27, a later hour. Glorify thy son. For Jesus to be the son of God, he has to be God the son. John 17, 2, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Daniel 7, 13 to 14, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. He should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Jesus reveals those that God has given him as the apostles in verse 6. And this also includes the little flock of Luke 12 verse 32. John 6, 68 and 25. John 17 verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John 7, 28, 29, then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am, and I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he has sent me. John 17, 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which, which thou gavest me to do. 332, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. I have glorified thee on the earth. Jesus glorified his father by the good works he did in his name. The work which thou gavest me to do, to teach the twelve apostles God's word, to prepare them, lead the little flock, and to sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. John 6:29. This is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he has sent. John T. 5, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Glorify thou me with thine own self. God will not share his glory with another, but he will share it with someone who is one with him. His son, this means they are co-equal. Isaiah 42, 8, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. The glory which I had with thee before the world was, this testifies to Jesus' eternality. John 17, 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. I have manifested thy name, John 17, 12, and 26. Matthew 6, 9, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The men which thou gavest me out of the world, the twelve apostles and the little flock of Luke 12, 32, they have kept thy word, they kept God's word in their hearts and on their lips. John 17, 7 to 8, Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee, for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. For below. John 3, 34, For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. John 17, 9 to 11, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Now I am no more in the world. He was going to die on the cross and ascend into heaven after his resurrection. This is the only time you find anyone calling God Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me. Jesus was turning the twelve back over to his Father who gave them to him in the first place. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. John seventeen twelve. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. 
I kept them in thy name, Jesus kept them. The phrase in thy name is used in one verse in each of the four Gospels, Matthew 7.22, Mark 9.38, Mark and Luke 9.49. Matthew 7.22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? John 10.25-30, those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. 39. The son of perdition, this is speaking of Judas Iscariot. The Antichrist is the only other person called this. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. The scripture concerning Judas Iscariot found in Psalms 109, 8. Let his days be few and let another take his office. John 17, 13 to 14. And now come I to thee and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. And now come I to thee Jesus is speaking of his resurrection and ascension to sit at his Father's right hand, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Hebrews 12 verse 2, For the joy that was set before him endured the cross. John 15 to 16, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Keep them from the evil, no rapture here, not from evil, but from the evil. The evil of the devil and the Antichrist during the tribulation. Deliver us from evil. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. This is one of only two times the word sanctify appears in the Gospels. The other time is in verse 19 below. Jesus asks God to sanctify, set apart the apostles with the word of God so they can teach it to other Israelites. John 17, 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. As thou hast sent me into the world, Jesus was fully able to do the works the Father sent him to do. Even so have I also sent them into the world. Jesus enabled the twelve to do the works of the Father. John 17, 19, And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. For their sakes I sanctify myself. Jesus set himself apart to do the Father's word. The truth, the word of God. Verse 17. John 17, 20 to 21. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Neither pray I for these alone, the apostles and the one twenty in the upper room, them also which shall believe on me through their word. This is speaking about the little flock of believers that would believe the gospel of the kingdom. This includes the three thousand and the five thousand saved in early Acts. Luke twelve thirty two that they all may be as one in one accord. The little flock was in one accord in Acts 1 to 5 because of Christ's prayer here. Acts 1, 14 to 1, 46, 4, 24, and 5, 12, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Acts 3, verse 24 to 26. John 17, 22 to 23, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one. The glory that God the Father gave to Jesus, Jesus gives it to the twelve, that they and them which heard the twelve were one, that they may be made perfect in one, they were to be in one accord by the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1, 44 and 46, 4, 20, 5 or 12, 7, 57, 8, 6. John 17, 24. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. I will that they also, 
whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. They will behold his unified glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit in the kingdom. Verse 22 above. Thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Jesus is eternal because he is God the Son. John 17, 25, 26. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. These have known that thou hast sent me. John 16, 30. Thank you.